Now, I started this off saying, oh, um, I want these shapes to be a bit unusual, right? Maybe you were hearing me explaining this and thinking, that shape doesn't look very unusual at all. It's got heaps of straight edges. There are lots of specific things you need to know about it. So I want you to, along or underneath this, draw another diagram for me. But I want it to look like this. Okay, now. Are they meant to be parallel? Uh, the two, the straight lines? Yeah. yeah. Uh, roughly? Okay. Yeah, roughly. <laughs> now, <laughs> this is looking decidedly weirder than this guy. Do you agree? It's like, oh, you know, this is like a nice neat, like you cut this out of something. But this, it's like, yeah, both of these sides are wonky. This could be like a, a, a riverbed or something like that. Okay? And the thing is, once you have this rough idea of how to do this, you can use this idea on this just by slicing it across the middle. Watch. If I put a straight line down the middle, imagine that's you and your friends walking across, right? And then you make some measurements. I can play exactly the same game as I did with that. I'm just going to do it twice. Watch. I put now a line here. Do you see what I've got? I've just got two of them jammed together. Does, does that make sense? Like one's on the top. This is H. This is H. Here is the first distance, here is the middle one, and then here is the last one, right? So you can work out the top bit, you just go ahead, you crunch your numbers, and you'll get that. And then you replay all over again, but you've got this as your first distance, and then this as your middle distance, and then this as your last distance. Now they're all different, but if I add them all up, top half, bottom half, there's my estimate. So that's when both are. Sorry. So if, um, if the bottom line's straight, then that's when you use the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Then when it's different to the top. Yeah, yeah. And you'll often find the diagram that they give you actually slices it for you, and then you have you, you know there's a top part and a bottom part. Well, if it's the same line, you still have to it's the same as the top. Oh, well, for example, these two happen to look pretty equal to each other, just by coincidence. So that's fine. I would just go ahead, I'd use this formula all over again, and sure, some numbers might repeat. No big deal. Yeah, I expect I would get something slightly different off of these, but that's okay, the approximation takes care of it. Okay. Now, you remember I said too it's an approximation? Okay. There's one more trick we have up our sleeve if we're like, I'm not content, maybe I need like more accuracy or something like that. What I want you to do is come back to this original diagram. Yours should look like mine except without the red lines. Is that what yours looks like? Yeah. Okay. Now, what I want you to imagine doing, I'm actually going to do it and you're going to help me, is to take this half and get rid of it. Okay. So now I've got this. Now, what I've got now is like the original shape, but if I want to, I can divide it up like this. Okay. My H is going to be different. Do you see that? My H is going to be this far, like that, okay? But the smaller and smaller I go, the more accuracy I'll get. Just like if you use like a ruler, which is more and more fine, you're going to get more and more detail of this shape, okay? And in fact, I can divide it up as many times as I want. I can divide it like this. I can divide these guys up even further until I get to the level of detail that I'm happy with, okay? So you'll see both of these. You'll see them saying, hey, can you do Simpson's rule but do it two-sided? Or they'll say, hey, can you do Simpson's rule but can you go into more detail for me? And you just use this more and more times as is necessary. Okay. Now, the formula is hard to remember. Everyone, um, I should point out, 2-unit and extension 1 and extension 2 students, they use this formula too, and they also have trouble memorizing it. Okay? That's one of the reasons why. It's, um, you'll find it... On the second page, approximation using Simpson's rule. The formula is there exactly as I've written it. I will point out, <laughs> back in my day, we didn't have a formula in data sheet. <laughs> so the way, the trick that I use, and this is not to be sneezed at, because you don't want to have to refer to the formula in data sheet if you can remember something, right? I looked at this, and the way we remembered is that um, there's another rule that's very similar to this, and it's got different numbers. 
I always remember it's um, it's Simpsons rule, right? It's Simpsons rule. Who is the most famous Simpson? It's Homer. It's Homer, right? And how many children does he have again? Three. He has three, right? Three, 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 three. Okay. So we use that as our like little mental cue to um, remember what the right numbers are. You, this is always a bit tricky, but if you are ever in doubt, go to your formula sheet. It's there for this exact reason. Okay. All right. So um. What I want you to do is, if you haven't already, you can jot these down. When you have a look at, say, number one, just have a look at number one, one A. You can see the numbers there, okay? Can you look at one A? Tell me, what are the H's? Which, which of, there's a lot of numbers there. Which number is the H number? Thirty. Look carefully. The H has to be 30 because it's the one that's um, common all the way along, okay? So you can see it's going to be 30 in that case. That tells you that the 18, the 16, and the 23, what are they? Where do they fit in here? The, 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 the yeah, the distances, 18, 16, 23, perfect, okay? 